Hi JBN, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine and this is your new Homemark sewing machine. I've been a little slow getting to this video. Had some other things on the restoration bench that were kind of pressing. So here she is and um, we're going to go over the uh, basics of operation with you. Uh, you may already know how to uh, operate this machine, but just in case you need a little brush up on it, uh, we're going to go over how to thread the machine, how to wind the bobbin, how to uh, work the, uh, the stitch length and the sewing foot pressure, how to drop the feed, uh, just everything that uh, you need to know to uh, operate this sewing machine. Your bobbin is located down here below this plate. And uh, you'll notice there is a lever on the side of the bobbin case that uh, you can get a hold of to pull your bobbin out. And as long as you're holding that lever up, your bobbin's not going to drop out. So let go of the lever, drop your bobbin out, and um, quite a bit of white thread. I think I'll just leave that on there and we'll wind another bobbin. So to wind a bobbin, put your bobbin, your spool, on the spool pin. Go into the notch at the top front down to the tension assembly for the bobbin winder. This is spring loaded, so it puts just a little bit of drag on your thread. Then put your thread through one of the holes in the side of the bobbin from the inside toward the outside <clears throat> and put several wraps on the bobbin to hold the thread in place while the bobbin winds. And at this point you can cut off that little tail. Your bobbin goes on the bobbin winder with the thread coming on over the top this way. Turn the uh, rubber tire until the little keeper pin goes into the side of the bobbin. Then push the little button here that says push and this lever will drop into the bobbin. And as the bobbin winds and the uh, bobbin fills with thread, this lever is going to move up further and further and further. And when the bobbin's full, it'll pop it free and stop it from winding any further. Release the clutch by turning the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel towards you an eighth of a turn or so until it hits its stop. And then the hand wheel can spin without making the machine cycle. And that's plenty for our test. So click this lever up, tighten your clutch knob, and then your bobbin goes into the bobbin case with the thread coming off the top in this direction. Guide your thread into the little slanted slot on the side of the bobbin case and up under the flat leaf spring, which is your lower tension. You'll feel it click into place. And then there's just a little bit of drag on your thread. Put it into the, uh, onto the spindle in the center of the hook down here below the uh, needle plate uh, with this little finger pointing up. There's a cutout for it that that little finger will fit into and that keeps the bobbin from spinning while you're sewing. Actually, it keeps the bobbin case from spinning while the bobbin spins. To thread the machine, put your spool on the spool pin, go into the notch on the back of the machine, 
directly down between the discs of the tension assembly, all the way to the top, go behind the big thread guide here, and then down behind this little thin check spring and come up into it so that your thread is inside of the loop and it lifts the uh, check spring when you pull the thread. From there, go into the take-up lever from the back of the machine towards the front. Down into this thread guide on the face plate and you just slip the thread in from the side like that. Go into the thread guide on the needle clamp and through the eye of the needle from the outside of the machine towards the inside, from the left towards the right. Cut a nice clean end on your thread and it'll be easier to thread the needle. Put your fabric under the pressure foot. Uh, set your stitch length. Um, you can just set it to random stitch length um, without setting the uh, gauge here. But if you know how long you want your stitch length to be, and we want ours to be at about 12 stitches per inch. You're going to read 12 in the window here. Tighten this thumb screw. Then in the down position, it'll make 12 stitches per inch. And in the up position, it'll make 12 stitches per inch in reverse. From the zero position, where the feed dogs don't move the fabric at all, going down, your stitches get longer and longer and longer until all the way at the bottom are your longest stitch lengths. From zero going upwards, your stitches get longer and longer, but in reverse. So we're going to go forward at 12 stitches per inch. Um, this is the pressure on your sewing foot. Um, for this fabric, we're going to want it down about a third to halfway. Just enough so your fabric moves along with authority. Um, this is your tension assembly and the way that I've set this up. Your average tension for average thread, average fabric is going to be at three. For heavier fabric, you might want a little more pressure uh, on your tension discs. For a lightweight fabric, you might want to back it off and have a little less tension. We're ready to sew. stitch. <coughs> um, this knob here drops your feed. If you want to do machine embroidery or patching or darning <coughs> um, and you don't want the teeth of the feed dogs to move your fabric because you want to move the fabric, uh, turn this knob all the way in the clockwise direction to embroidery. And uh, at this point, the teeth of the feed dogs never come above the needle plate, so they never contact the fabric, and you do all of the moving yourself. Uh, in the center position, it's marked silk. Uh, if you're sewing delicates, uh, you may want a little bit less aggressive uh, movement on your fabric, uh, so it doesn't mar the fabric. And put it on silk. But for regular sewing, you want it on normal. That's where the teeth of the feed dogs come all the way up and they move the fabric. Um, let's see, is there anything we haven't covered?
No, I think that's about everything. Um, but she's sewing great, and um, she's a beautiful machine. Uh, made in Japan back uh, uh, in the middle of the last century. Um, very high quality machine, strong and fast. And uh, I hope that you enjoy her as much as we have. So again, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. And if you've come here from somewhere else on the internet, come up across a link to our video. Um, we are on Stagecoach Road out in the coast range of Oregon. And so we are stagecoachroadsewing.com. And if you come out to our website, stagecoachroadsewing.com, which is down right now while we're out at our winter location uh, just because it's pretty hard to ship sewing machines from Oregon when you're down near the uh, Mexico border. But in another month we'll be back up in uh, Oregon and when you come to the website uh, you're going to see hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of beautiful machines that we've restored over the past uh, 25 years or so and of course, we've uh, restored well over a thousand machines, but you'll see uh, a few hundred of them uh, with views from all different angles and a little bit of information about each machine. And at the top of the page, you'll find um, a few machines, usually 10 or 15 machines uh, that are for sale that you can bring home to your own sewing room. So check us out. We are stagecoachroadsewing.com. And we'll see you there.